the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. Revelation opens up the future for us. So in Revelation chapter number 9 and verse 1, the scripture says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared to battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. They had hair as the hair of a woman, and with teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. The sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions. And there were stings in their tail. Their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Woe, one woe is past. And behold, there come two woes more. I preach you a message about something that is happening right now while you're sitting in this auditorium. It's in CERN, Switzerland. Now, you may not be aware of what's going on over there, but there's a thing over there that's called a Large Hadron Collider. And it is an accelerator. It accelerates particles and then brings them to the point of collision. So this Large Hadron Collider was started up just a few days ago, and it's still in the initial process of being brought online completely. You say, what in the world does something like that have to do with me and the Bible? It has a lot to do with you and the Bible. I cannot and will not attempt to speak as a physicist. It would make me look like a fool. My purpose this morning is to try to be a liaison between them and you is to try to take what's going on in that collider and break it down to where I can understand it and I can give it out so you can understand it to where it makes an application to your life and to this world as we know it today. For what is happening in that collider is an astounding thing. So I want to read something to you this morning from what's called a theoretical physicist. This man, his name is Stephen Hawking. He's well known throughout the world. Anyone that has anything to do with nuclear energy or has anything to do with physics knows this man. And he is one that some rate even on the level of Einstein and uh, of that level. And so I'm going to read to you what this man has to say about what's happening right now in CERN, Switzerland. Listen carefully. These are the words of Stephen Hawking. He recently warned the reactivation in March of CERN's Large Hadron Collider could pose grave dangers to our planet. The ultimate reality, check, we are warned. Hawking has come straight out and said, the God particle, and this is what you've heard referred to time and again as the Higgs boson particle, the God particle found by CERN could destroy the universe. Now let that settle in. This man is an atheist, and he says there is no God. Yet he says that what's happening right now in CERN, Switzerland, and I'll give you what they're trying to do in a moment, what's happening at this very minute in CERN, Switzerland, has the potential to destroy the universe. 
This is a theoretical physicist. Now, physicists come in all kinds of sizes. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson has also sounded the alarm in a hypothetical manner by telling anyone who might want to blow up a planet how to do so is this CERN's attempt to do so by attempting to recreate the Big Bang within a man-made structure. This has frightened Stephen Hawking so much. Do they know that they know that they know what they are doing? Ask yourself, how much energy is keeping it together? Neil deGrasse Tyson told co-host Eugene Merman on his Star Talk radio show, then you put more than that amount of energy into the object, it will explode. Now, now I think I've got your attention. I've quoted two physicists. These are scientists. These men do not agree with what's happening in CERN, Switzerland right now. There is a 17 mile long accelerator that lies 300 feet beneath the surface of the ground. This area is where France and Switzerland come together. So part of this accelerator is located in France and part of it in Switzerland. It is a joint European project. The United States of America is there as an observer, but the, but the brain power that's going in to this experimentation originates in Europe. They are attempting to recreate what they believe happened that brought all of this into existence as being the Big Bang. Now you and I know from the book of Genesis chapter number one that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. He spoke it into existence. They are finding things, and this is what's important for us to understand today. They are discovering things that they did not expect to discover as they get deeper and deeper into this, uh, into this experimentation and uh, development and research and so forth. They are beginning to find out that there is a whole lot more to the creation than they had ever given thought to before. They're beginning to find out that there's something going on here that boggles the human mind, that literally blows us apart when we try to even comprehend what's happening. This 17 mile long underground tube that is uh, located there in Switzerland has I think four or five different points where they collide with some say protons and maybe something else, but particles that are being moved at or above the speed of light inside this collider. Now for your information, there is one near us in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, but it is not nearly as large as what we're dealing with here. And apparently the larger the collider, the more speed that they can attain and the more they're able to get deeper into what they're looking for. They're looking for the very building blocks of what brought all of this together. To give you an analogy, let's say you have a house. You observe that house, it's beautiful. You think, my goodness, let's see how this is put together. And so you start taking the house apart and you expect to find nails, but instead you find glue. That fascinates you that much more because you find glue holding this house together, you wonder to yourself, what was this glue like before its hardened state? Because you see, once the glue glues the things together, it hardens, solidifies. They want to know what the glue was like in its liquid state. So they're going through this to go back to that point to where they can separate and find out what this was like then. And by doing that, of course, they can build on the information and knowledge that they attain. Now, what's going to follow in the message this morning is the implications of what's going on. But let me give you just a little bit of what has been happening. Where they have done this experimentation, strange things are happening, unexpected by the scientist. Paranormal phenomena, they like to call it. 
apparition. 